I was on the flight over, and uh, I don't know if you've ever uh, had a talker who sits beside you on a plane, but I had one, and this was a 10-hour flight, so you can imagine how excited I was as an introvert to be stuck in the middle seat beside somebody who was a talker. But, um, you know, as you, as you do on these flights, he started out by asking me questions like, oh, what do you do? Where do you work? That kind of stuff. And I said, oh, you know, like I'm in this this ecosystem called WordPress and what do I do? Uh, I'm, I'm starting this new thing. It's all about like people and culture and how we kind of are, are looking at that. And I'm going to a conference to do a presentation. He goes, oh, that's very cool. Turns out he is um, the, I guess, like senior guy in a university in Florida. And um, he's got 50 people under him and they're based all around um, uh, the US now. Uh, he says that going remote was one of the hardest things that they've done as a company. And um, he had a lot to say about going remote. And honestly, listening to him was like seeing all of those horror stories that you hear about um, senior executives who set, who promised to, to their, their teams that they would be able to go remote and then wants to bring them all back. He was telling me about how he's got like five employees that he doesn't even know what they do all day. You know, like, are they even working? Uh, I don't even know. I mean, I can tell when this person's working, so I need to bring them all back so that, that they can, you know, be working and, and that kind of stuff. And, you know, I'm sitting there, obviously stuck, um, listening to him talk about this and reminding myself through that experience of why I want to do this kind of stuff and talk about this kind of stuff. Um, I've got a couple of goals for today, and, and these are the things that I hope uh, to accomplish in my talk, things I hope you take away, but I really want you to leave curious about your own team's experience. Um, I want you to leave with permission to be more invested in your team's experience. And my real hope is that at this time next year, our teams are happier, healthier, and performing better than ever because you're more curious about your team's experience and you're more invested in your team's experience. You might be wondering why. Why, why should I even care about this? You know, WordPress is a really interesting ecosystem because a lot of the time you can start at any point, right? Anyone can do anything in WordPress. If you have an idea of something to create or something to fix uh, on, on WordPress, um, you can start something and all of a sudden you, you can make money from it. Not only can you make money, you can build a team around it, right? And, and maybe that's the story of a lot of you. You, you started out, you, you built some, a project or you did it for free and, and gave it away. And then all of a sudden you realize, oh no, people really like this. So you created a premium version. And then with the premium version, you realized, oh no, now I've got to hire support staff. And then once you had support staff, you realize now you've got to hire marketing staff. And then from your marketing staff, you realize now you needed more developers and engineers. And all of a sudden you, as this developer who just had this idea to fix something or to make something cool, are now responsible for this whole big team right? It's crazy. And as I look at WordPress and where we are, we're 20 years old now. You know, many of us are, have been doing this for a little while. Um, some of us have been lucky enough to sell, sell off to, to greener pastures. But this whole idea of, of building a team is maybe not something that you got into WordPress for, but you find yourself in the position of needing to think about it. So we're gonna talk through something. And that's kind of why uh, I, I did this, because the reality is that Financial success doesn't really equal team success, right? And we've got a really great use case um, to, to look at that's outside of our ecosystem. Uh, has anybody here uh, been following what's been going on with the, the little blue bird? And it's a recent uh, takeover by someone and what the experience has been like. There are stories all over the internet of what it's like uh, to work in that space now after a new leader came in. And now you might argue, you know, their, their ad revenue is down, but in terms of, of just revenue and financial success and team size, they've done it, they've made it, right? But just because they're generating revenue doesn't necessarily mean their team is happy, healthy, or that their culture is even sustainable. What got us here is not going to get us there. I think that's, that's basically what I'm, I'm thinking about today. You know, as, as you are a leader in your team, as you're, you're looking at all these things, 
you know, like what got you to where you are now is not going to help you get to where you need to go. If we want the next 20 years of WordPress to be amazing, we need companies that are willing to stick it out for the next 20 years and be around that long. Um, I was uh, reading some stuff on Shopify recently, and Shopify has this really interesting um, slogan, if you will, that they want to build a 100-year company. Can you imagine building a 100-year company? There aren't many of those around, but um, imagine WordPress full of 100-year companies, right? Like, what would you need to do as a team, as a culture, um, and your structure in order to make that possible? The future of WordPress isn't just about our ability to create great products, right? It's actually a, a lot more than that. It's about our ability to create great teams. That's kind of my, my thinking on it. And so how can we ensure that as our companies grow and succeed, our teams do too? That's the question that was really going around in my head when I decided to kick off this whole thing called Team WP. Um, and and the, the real issue was, as, as I started to look at this, uh, I did what you know, most, I'm, I'm a marketer by, by trade, so I did what most marketers do. I tried to find some data and see if there was anything out there that could help me understand what teams are, are going through in WordPress. And it turns out um, we just don't know enough. There's, there's like no data uh, about WordPress and, and what our employees and our companies are experiencing or feeling or going through. So I said, all right, well, let's have a go. Let's see if we can figure that out. So I launched something in February or, or April, I guess, called um, the Team Experience Index. The Team Experience Index was uh, something that I wanted to give to WordPress. The idea was that if I could give uh, team leaders, team managers, some data-based insights on what their employees are experiencing, you would have um, some inspiration and some clear understanding of what comes next for you as you invest in your team. So, uh, oh, this slide, uh, yeah. So here's some, some information on, on um, what we did. So we, we put it out there. We had around 293 responses come in. Um, 50 plus companies participated in it. And um, the survey completion rate was about 20.5%. So I don't know if you've ever taken a survey, but this one was like 70 questions long. Um, you're welcome. And uh, it, it took people some time to fill out. Um, not much time, but when you tell somebody that it's like an actual five minutes, they think one minute, but no, this was like a real five minutes, like you had to actually think about things, but it was good. So thank you to everyone who participated and filled it out. Here's a little bit of information about it. Um, we had uh, some demographic questions that we asked. These were completely optional, so you did not have to fill it out. One of the really big things about collecting information like this is when you're asking people for feedback, especially about their employee experience, anonymity and confidentiality is really, really important. You're never going to get an honest answer from someone if they're worried that it's going to come back to them or if they're going to get found out. Um, so we worked really hard to make sure that everything was anonymized, everything was randomized, and we will never disclose any individual response, but um, we will show you sort of the aggregate of what's going on. But we did ask some demographic questions to invite some people to share a little bit about where they're based or, or, or how, they, um, how they represent. Uh, and this is the results. One of the things that's really cool here, I don't know if you can see, is the, um, the male to female in um, self-disclosure. We had 65% female and 33% male. So an overabundance of women were willing to tell us that, that they were filling this out, which I thought was really cool and really brave. Um, because, uh, and, and because I don't know if you know this, but it's really risky for people, especially women and, and people from historically underrepresented groups to share feedback and do this kind of thing um, because they're the ones most at risk of having something happen and not be able to recover as quickly. So I was really excited about that. So thank you to everyone um, who was brave enough to disclose that. Um, and here's a breakdown as well of where people were from. So about 55% were from North America. Uh, Europe was 16%, Asia was 22%, and then the rest of the world was around 7%. Uh, a little bit of information about um, who filled this in as well. So we had uh, around 20% were from product companies. Uh, so that's plugins, themes, things like that. 34% uh, are what I call logistics or hosting companies. Um, and 47% were from agencies and service providers. 
uh, as far as company size goes, um, it was pretty good split, but you can see the two big ones were the 11 to 29 category and the 300 plus category. Um, not everyone who filled it in in the 300 plus category, by the way, was from a hosting company. There were a lot of agency people in there as well. Um, yeah, so there's that. And then the breakdown as well of, of who they were by company role. So senior leader, team manager, and team member. I thought this was really cool, actually, to see like senior leaders and team managers were as willing to fill in the survey as uh, team members. Uh, when, when you're asking for feedback, sometimes it's the, the team member that's like, I am ready to you know, tell you how it is. Um, and this is the result. So uh, I developed this framework. It's called the Open Team Framework. And it has eight different areas that we measure in. So transparent leadership, authentic purpose, candid communication, empowered ownership, collaborative decision making, continuous learning, and inclusive culture. And so the global open team score, and so this is the average across all eight areas, is 89. That's pretty high and uh, worthy, I think, of a round of applause for the WordPress community. And to give you a little sense of how this data, uh, I hope, is used, um, I ran, uh, I, I worked with a, a team called Barn2 Plugins. And um, what we are able to do is plot their scores against um, the open team benchmark and show them where they're doing well compared to the community or compared to like the, the, the global sort of like ecosystem and also where they have opportunities. And so this was their score, which was also amazing. So big, huge round of applause to um, Barn2 because like that's a great culture score. So now I want to talk through each of the eight areas um, that we took a look at. And I've given quick little definitions here of what we mean by each of these, just to give you a sense. So transparent leadership is trustworthy, ethical, and communicative leadership. Um, it emphasizes the importance of open, honest communication, accountability, and active engagement from company leaders. Um, and when you do that, you foster a sense of trust and collaboration across the entire organization. So these are the questions that were on the survey that were um, geared toward this. Um, so the, the transparent leadership score overall was 86% positive, 6% uh, neutral, 8% negative. And this is what we do for each question. Um, for the, if you didn't take the survey, that's fine. I'll tell you how it works. We basically asked people questions um, or, or gave them statements, what we call Likert statements, and we asked them to rate their agreement with the statement from strongly disagree, disagree, neutral, agree, and strongly agree. Um, and we weighted it based on the, um, the response. So that's how we got these scores here. Um, so there's things in here like our company leaders have communicated a vision that motivates me. Um, really high scores for our company leaders are honest and ethical in their business practices. Um, so here's some strengths of uh, transparent leadership and some opportunities, I think, in, for uh, WordPress companies. 92% um, agree that leaders are honest and ethical. Good. That's probably something you want in your leaders. Um, I can ask uh, company leaders any reasonable question and get a straight answer. I don't know if you've ever worked in an environment where you're afraid to talk to your boss or you're afraid to talk to your boss's boss. But one of the things that's really exciting to see in WordPress is that we are approachable, right? Uh, senior leaders, managers are approachable and um, our, our teams feel that way. Um, I will say that senior leaders didn't fill out a bunch of these questions uh, intentionally because we didn't want to you know, skew the results in their favor. Um, and 91% agreed uh, that the leaders here demonstrate that people are important to the company's success. So that's really cool. Opportunities. 80% uh, agreed that our company effectively directs resources, funding people and effort to our company goals. Uh, might not be surprising, maybe it is. Uh, to me, what that says is just that there are people who think that you know, maybe they're, they're overworked or that they, they have these company goals that they're working toward, but they don't have, uh, they're just stretched too thin to be able to, to accomplish them. Uh, our company leaders have communicated a vision that motivates me was at 81%. Um, and I think, uh, I have some ideas on this one, uh, but I think this one really is, is uh, our distributed nature uh, and, and um, the way that a lot of us are in remote teams means we don't get as much face time uh, with our leadership team. And the leadership teams of our companies are probably talking vision and talking strategy and 
have clarity on purpose and mission, uh, but they, they haven't maybe communicated that or, or haven't communicated it enough to their teams. And then um, finally here, 83% uh, agreed that company leadership here keeps people informed about what is happening. So yeah, there you go. So I think that there's an opportunity here for team leaders and, and um, executives or senior leaders to actually be more engaged with their team as far as like telling them what's going on. Uh, when I was at Envato, this was something they did really well. So we would have an all hands for the entire company every two weeks, which is really cool. And then like every quarter or so, they would actually get up and they would share like how the, the company was going, what was going on um, financially and how they were progressing toward goals. Um, they were using tools to help with that. But you can imagine a, a team of like 600 people all getting together and being able to see that and then ask questions at the end. It was, it was pretty powerful and, and pretty good at helping people stay connected to um, the core of what the, the company was all about. Authentic purpose is uh, really about aligning the company's mission, vision, and values with its day-to-day -day operations. So maybe you've heard the story about the janitor at NASA who, when he gets asked, what does he do, um, says, I'm putting a man on the moon, right? He had real clarity about the purpose of what he was doing and why he was there. And even though his job was to maybe sweep and, and empty the rubbish bins, he uh, was helping to put a, a person on the moon, and I think that's great. And so that's what authentic purpose is all about. And so we look at a number of things uh, here in this space. And again, um, pretty, pretty decent scores for the WordPress ecosystem. I rarely think about looking for a job elsewhere, right? Um, uh, I see myself working here in two years' time. Uh, my work has special meaning. This is not just a job. I have a feeling in WordPress, this probably ranks a little bit higher than maybe in the rest of the world and, and in the rest of tech because we are a community, we're, we're, we're very passionate people. We've got this, this project that we all contribute to that we love and are passionate about. Um, and I think that that bleeds into that sense of purpose that we all have. Uh, I'm proud to tell others I work here. Uh, I would recommend our company as a great place to work. Here's a few of the, the strengths. I know how my work contributes to our company goals. 96%, that's fantastic. Uh, the products and services our company provides are as good as or better than our main competitors. Teams, you have faith in your projects, you have faith in your, your, your work, and that's awesome. I'm proud to tell others I work here. That's pretty cool. If you're developing an employer brand or you're about to recruit or hire, get your people to do it. Get your people to tell their stories about what's going on. How exciting is that? They're probably pretty excited to tell people what's going on. Um, opportunities, 86% um, said, I rarely think about looking for a job elsewhere. Uh, when I look at what we accomplish, I feel a sense of pride. Uh, I see myself working here in two years time. So these are kind of, there's a bit of a flag here maybe for us to take a look at. It's not that bad when you consider that the spread is 87% to 94% to between strengths and opportunities. But just something to consider and think through um, is that, uh, you know, we all have our, our eyes open and doors open to new opportunities and things. Um, when I look at what we accomplish, I feel a sense of pride. I wouldn't consider that low, but I would consider that people's inner critique maybe going, oh, I pushed that out. Oh, there's three bugs. I wish I would have got rid of those before it went live, but here we are. All right, candid communication. This one's fun. Uh, has anybody here ever uh, had to, or wanted to give feedback to somebody or wanted to have a conversation that maybe wasn't all, you know, like rainbows and lollipops? Um, it's really important to do that. Um, no matter who you are in the company, um, bottom to the top, having candid conversations um, in a space that's safe can be really, really great for your culture um, and help you get past some challenges as well. 90% here, um, there's open and honest two-way communication in our team. Uh, this is a psychologically safe, space, uh, safe place to work. Uh, when it is clear that someone is not delivering in their role, we do something about it. That one's interesting. Uh, I don't know if you can see that on the score there, I'll bring it up here, but 78% agreed with that. So. When you look at some of the other scores we've had, even in the opportunity space, uh, there's some opportunity here for us to, ha to have a think about this. 
Uh, 97% agreed there is open and honest two-way communication in our team. That's great. I mean, if you're remote, you're going to have to get on a call at some point and talk to folks. Uh, I can voice a contrary opinion without fear of negative consequences. Um, yeah, so you can disagree. That's great. Perspectives like mine are included in decision-making. One of the things um, you may not know, Tis, as we're going through this is um, diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging questions are not seg segregated to one specific um, principle of the Open Team Framework. We spread them all throughout each one, uh, particularly because DEI and B is not a program. It's, a, it's just how we all should be working. Um, and uh, so we've tried to spread those out and, and provide some insights here. And this is one of those questions um, where perspectives like mine are included. Um, and I think that's really cool to see such a high score, um, especially when you consider those who self-identified as women are 55, 65% of the people that filled out the survey. So that's really great. 89% um, agreed, I am happy with my current role relative to what was described to me. And 91% said this is a psychologically safe space, uh, safe place to work. Now, it's in the opportunity category only because uh, it was in the bottom three, but this category in particular did quite well. So, um, yeah, moving on. Um, if you've got questions, we're going to curate space at the end for questions. But if you have an insight or something that you see, I don't mind if you yell it out either. It's pretty cool. Let's have a fun, fun chat here. Uh, empowered ownership focuses on creating an environment that supports autonomy, encourages innovation, and promotes accountability at all levels. Now, depending on whether your team is distributed or you have a hybrid model or you're all based in one location, uh, empowered ownership looks a little bit different. Uh, I find that with teams that are, are fully distributed, the sense of empowered ownership is probably a lot higher, uh, and the amount of trust that you have for your teams is significantly higher as well, uh, as it has to be. Uh, and we see that in some of the scores here as well. Um, so we have enough autonomy to perform our jobs effectively, uh, things like that. Uh, so 90% was the total here. And here's some of the strengths. Uh, we have enough autonomy. Uh, I have access to the things I need to do my job well. And I know what I need to do to be successful in my role. 83% um, agreed the information I need to do my job effectively is readily available. Uh, we act on promising new or innovative ideas. We hold ourselves accountable and our team members accountable for results. So again, those are toward the bottom, but this whole category as a whole, um, you all did very well. Collaborative decision-making emphasizes the value of diverse perspectives and encourages employees to contribute their ideas, insights, and expertise to drive better outcomes. So 88% here, 7% neutral, and 5% negative questions like other teams collaborate with us to get the job done you can count on people to, co to cooperate um, some of the strengths uh, were that you can count on people to cooperate that's cool um, have you ever been part of a team where that wasn't the case uh, where you maybe had had some negative experiences I've, I've been there so to see that overwhelmingly at least with the the survey group that they uh, thought that things were that they could count on their team that was really cool and they could they felt part of a team um, I think that's a belonging question, right? I feel included. I feel part of it, especially in remote and distributed environments. Uh, that sense of belonging you have to work really hard on um, because you might not ever meet people. I worked for a company a little while ago for about a year and a half, and I never met anyone in person until after I finished there, um, which is kind of crazy, right? But that's, that's how it can go sometimes. It was also COVID, so nobody was meeting anyone. Um, opportunities here. Um, are 79% uh, agreed that administrative tasks that don't have a specific owner are fairly divided. This is, uh, this is an interesting one. This is one of the lower scores in the entire survey. And um, what it tells me is that the people that do good work get the work. Um, and sometimes that means that people that don't do get work have less work. Um, and it puts a lot of burden on those people that are, are good at doing things. Um, and so maybe something to consider is uh, partnering people up together um, and uh, assigning things that way and, and taking some of the load off of your best workers. 82% uh, agreed other teams collaborate with us to get the job done. I don't know if this is a conflict between support and marketing or support and engineering or engineering and marketing, uh, but I can see all of those things happening. Maybe you've, you've had a situation where engineering's uh, just done the, the pull request and, and uh, merged everything into, into um, you know, the, the public um, stream and it's about to go live and so they just do it. 
and they don't tell marketing until the day it's going live, and marketing's like, wait, you just launched a whole new dot release of this project, and you expect me to have a whole marketing campaign set up and ready to go for that? Excuse me. And then you have support coming in and going, uh, documentation? Did anybody document anything? What am I supposed to do? Has anyone tested this yet? Right? Um, so there's opportunity here for us to maybe have a think about the way our teams do things and the way we roll things out. Uh, my team leader does a good job of assigning and coordinating people. That's an interesting one. 84% agreed. So I think this one probably uh, can be taken alongside the administrative tasks are, are fairly divided. Um, that maybe there's some opportunity here for us to, to think through that as, as team leaders. Continuous learning. This is one of my favorite ones um, because the whole idea of continuous learning is, is it's two things. It's offering resources and opportunities for skill development or career progression, but it's also a way of, a, of just approaching work, right? Uh, I, I really prefer saying, what did we learn um, out of something that maybe didn't hit our goals rather than, hey, that was a failure or that didn't work. The whole idea of failure is not a word I ever like to use in anything. Um, I prefer the whole concept of learning, right? And I'm a big fan and proponent of hypothesis-driven design and development uh, because when you start with a hypothesis, no matter what the result, you learn something. Right? And all you're doing in a hypothesis is trying to think of what you might, um, what you might get out of it. Um, yeah. So continuous learning. Good job, folks. Uh, you're doing some really cool stuff here. I have access to the things I need to do my job. Uh, management recognizes honest mistakes as part of doing business. Um, and my team leader or someone in management has shown a genuine interest in my career goals. So some strengths. Management recognizes honest mistakes as part of doing business. Great. No one wants to be, you know, made redundant or let go because of something that happened um, that was a genuine mistake. I love seeing, maybe you've seen those things where it's like, I don't know, somebody at KFC gets access to something and uploads some code and it's wrong, right? And then um, the whole world sees it and then you see the developer thread of everyone, you know, celebrating and encouraging them and saying all the things. I love that, right? That's a continuous learning opportunity. Um, I have access to the things I need to do my job well, and day-to-day -day decisions demonstrate that quality and improvement are top priorities. 85% uh, said my team leader or someone in management has shown a genuine interest in my career goals. Um, there's a lot of pressure on team managers in particular to be responsible for a lot more. Um, this is one that I hope every team manager takes seriously, um, that you have a responsibility to your team to do everything you can to help them grow. Uh, not just uh, in their efficiency or productivity, but in the, the things that they're interested in, right? Um, maybe you've got somebody in support who's interested in marketing, finding opportunities for them to jump over and maybe do a couple of weeks there or do a project or, or work on something. Uh, can be a really great way to expand their skill set, expose them to um, a new role, and uh, build some of that cross-team, cross-functional um, I don't know, growth or, or, or skill set, so that if some, somebody goes down sick, for example, you have somebody who can fill in the gap. 88% uh, agreed, I am given opportunities to develop skills relevant to my interests, and 89%, this is a great company for me to make a contribution to my development. So again, opportunities here for us. Inclusive culture. So this is, yeah, a safe and supportive space where all employees feel welcome, heard, and respected, regardless of their background, perspectives, or experience. Uh, I always find it hard to talk about inclusive culture because I am a 40-year-old married white male, and um, I am literally the least inclusive, I'm the, the poster boy for, for, you know, what tech is, I guess. Um, and... Uh, and so for me, though, when I think of inclusive culture and how it relates to me, the thing that I come down to is, can I bring my authentic self to work? Can I talk about how much I love K-pop and K-dramas uh, with my team? Um, can I share my love of knitting, right? And all of the projects I'm working on in my team and, you know, let them be as equally sassy and bring their, themselves to it. Um, and all, all, all in all, this is uh, something that everyone here is doing pretty darn good on. 93%, um, one of the higher scores that we had uh, throughout the entire um, survey. 
96% agreed we are genuinely supported if we choose to make use of flexible working arrangements. Uh, I am able to arrange time out from work when I need to. And generally, I believe my workload is reasonable for my role. 90% um, said, I feel like I belong here. I see myself working here in two years' time. My team leader cares about my well-being. So even though those are red, listed as opportunities, they're higher than some of the strengths in other categories. So all in all, I think we're doing okay. Or, or we didn't want to answer this one honestly, and so we were more positive maybe than, um, than, the, than the reality. And last but not least, intentional recognition, which centers on creating a culture that values employee achievements, provides fair compensation, and celebrates success. So 86%, probably one of our, our greatest opportunities here as well. Um, so 91% agreed we acknowledge people who deliver outstanding service, people celebrate special events and care about each other, I receive appropriate recognition for good work, uh, promotions go to those who best deserve them is 82 I believe my total compensation is fair in the context of the industry. I had, to, I had to add that last part in the context of our industry, because I don't know if you know this, but on average, uh, WordPress salaries are like 20 to 30% less than the wider tech community. Um, so if you just left it as my total compensation is fair, uh, people might not agree. Uh, generally, the right people are rewarded and recognized here. Uh, one more thing, though. So that's like the whole thing. We also asked a couple questions about the WordPress community and how people felt about WordPress uh, in the survey. Uh, and in particular, we asked how supportive team leaders and senior leaders are, or how empowered people feel to participate in the community. And if you see that around our open team framework, we had 80s and 90s. Uh, here with the WordPress community, we're sitting at 74%. And the questions we asked were, I feel good about the ways we contribute to the WordPress community, which had a 76. Our company leaders are actively engaged in the WordPress community, sat at 70%. And my team leader encourages me to participate in the WordPress community, 71%. And we are encouraged to make a positive difference in the WordPress community, sat at 80%. Um, we all have business goals. Um, I wonder if there's an opportunity here for us to add um, some community goals to our teams, not just at the senior level, not just at the sort of company brand level, but um, within our individual teams uh, around. Like, how can the marketing team uh, in a plugin company of 20 to 30 people contribute to the WordPress uh, ecosystem? How, how can that team leader? actively support people who are interested in it and ask questions about it and say, hey, what are we doing this quarter to support WordPress? Is there anything we can do? Uh, maybe it's translating a doc or doing something like that. So now what? A lot. Whew. Uh, when I did this presentation and I gave these results, similar results to Barn 2, at this point I was like, oh, that's a lot. Katie had a lot of patience to sit through it. So you've all had a lot of patience sitting through all the data. Thank you for that. Uh, and by the way, you'll have access to it after the talk as well. Um, but action is the foundational key to all success. That's what Picasso says. He's a European. And because we trust Europeans, we will trust Picasso and uh, agree with him here as well. Um, we, need to, we can't just have the data. We've got to do something with it. Um, so I've got three things, three takeaways that I think for our, our companies that we can uh, have a look at. So the first one is recognition and career progression. So one of the things that can happen in WordPress companies or, or any small company is that there doesn't feel a sense of forward momentum in a career. And if we're trying to recruit new people into WordPress, those ambitious young Gen Zers like um, Tycho Devok, who um, did his talk yesterday and uh, did a really great job, I like, how are we going to get people like that uh, to, to join WordPress as a career? Well, um, we've got to actually show them what the path is like for them, how they can grow. If they think they're going to be a developer, stuck as a developer for the next 40 years of their life, for some, that might work, but for others, that might not be what they want. And then how do we recognize people? How do we celebrate wins? How do we empower people and, and bring them together in a way that allows them to um, you know, take uh, pride, more pride, in the work that they do and celebrate it? So 
That's one. And I'm at zero minutes, so I'm trying to speed through this last little bit here. Um, support and training for team leaders. All throughout, you can see some of these results. Uh, our company effectively directs resources. My team leader makes uh, their expectations clear. My team leader does a good job of assigning and coordinating people. So we need to equip leaders with the tools to succeed uh, and inspire. So maybe investing in some comprehensive training programs, uh, encouraging regular team check-ins, and promoting uh, external inspiration. So foster a leadership style that's collaborative empathetic and innovative. And finally, communication from senior leaders. As I told you a little earlier at Envato, we, do all, we did all hands every two weeks when I was there. Um, and we did these quarterly um, check-ins that were fantastic. I've worked at some companies where they might have one all hands a year. Um, I've worked uh, at others where they have none. And um, when, when you don't know whether the work that you're doing is actually having the, the success or, or is meeting the goals that senior leaders have, it can be really unsettling, right, as, as an individual. And you're like, are, are we even doing what we're supposed to be doing? So uh, senior leaders communicating regularly, not just on uh, how the company is doing, but like the mission, because mission and vision leak, right? It's a leaky bucket. You got to keep pouring water into it. So you got to keep reminding people of the why. Um, uh, so I think that this is a, a great opportunity for our teams. So that's, that's pretty much it. That was my goals for today. I hope you leave curious about your own team's experience. Uh, you leave with permission to be more invested in your team's experience. And that if you can take on some of these things, that you can be happier, that your teams can be happier, healthier, and perform better than ever next year. Future of work is open. Right, And all of these results are open. You can, uh, at the end of this talk, I'll give them to you. And you can take all of the questions, all of the data. You can run your own employee engagement surveys in your teams and see how you stack up against the, the broader community as well. Thanks. That's me. Thank you. Now that my mic came off. So with that, we're going to start with some questions. Does anyone oh. have any questions for James? I see one right there. Thanks for coming, everyone. You can download the slides and everything at that link. Hey, James, it's Cliff. Hey, uh, Cliff. Long time listener, first time caller. <laughs> uh, how do you think it, it might skew one way or the other from a larger versus smaller organization, maybe under? 10 and, you know, 100. Um, in what sense? Like, like just all the data, how is it skewed? Or, or might it be skewed? If you have an answer to that, yes. Yeah, so um, the demographic breakdown of, of company size, uh, the two largest blocks were teams that were um, like 15 to 30 and uh, over 300. So that makes up about 50% of the total amount. And then teams... Uh, in between that were less than five, um, 50 to, uh, uh, 30 to 50, 50 to 100, 100 to 300. So um, I would say the data is pretty, pretty good um, and that we can be confident that the results are not necessarily skewed toward larger teams or smaller teams. Uh, my most recent experience uh, in work was in a, a team of about 600, 300, 600. So uh, when I talk, I often talk more corporate speak probably than, um, than for smaller teams. But if you are a single leader with a team, um, these things still apply, right? Ask yourself the question, when was the last time we actually got the whole team together and talked about our company goals and how we're tracking toward them? When was the last time I celebrated a win with the team? When was the last time um, I promoted someone, right? Those are all good questions that anyone can ask. Next question. Okay, I guess that's it then. Is that really it? <laughs> Thanks, folks.